man. <laughs> I don't know, Jason. A different question. I really don't know. Well, this has been set up beautifully. Kadian saying he's got a couple tricks up his sleeve that he wants to bust out into this game. Phase and heroic. And right out of the gate, there's a stack at top middle. Kadian on one side, Stout on the other. Shush all the way back in pit, and Faze starting to work themselves across the map. And it looks like they want to execute a little bit of a Hall's pop for the moment, but not quite convinced yet to fall into it permanently. Yeah, they could easily end up there. They have all the grenades for it. Going to be setting up a little bit of pressure towards the arch side of things. Kadian on the other side, he's thinking about it. He's hearing the steps, and now they have that double pit position as well. Getting tested, but they're just running straight on that. They're ignoring the pit, saying, you can stay down there if you want to. We are going to plant the bomb instead. Five on five for the afterplant, but quickly dispatched off. Brokey and Rops coming in with a couple of great kills here. And tilting the advantage towards FaZe. Kadian trying to get his team back into the game, but it's a one versus four for him, and he's taking out one player. That's not going to be enough. We'll hang around, look for one more kill here, but Brokey will shut him straight down. Good triple on him and a phase to win the opening pistol here on Inferno. Yeah, they, that's that's wonderful. And I mean, that, that was even a little bit risky. I was getting a little bit nervous about leaving Pit in the control of Heroic. We've seen so many times, if you don't have Pit control, hit those defenders in Pit and you're boxed into the bomb site. But man, does FaZe handle business. Great round. Nice and simple. And you got to say as well, Rops, as the attacker towards that pit position, has such a deep playbook. I, I feel like he's got to yeah. be one of the best T-sided players at attacking off balcony into pit. And that's going to be a fun matchup to watch throughout this entire half. I like that pregame interview with Katie and sort of talking about how there's a long road from here to the finals. You don't want to get ahead of yourself and think about, ooh, I wonder how we're going to do in the final. You, you actually have to qualify to get there. And the nice thing for Heroic in that sense, too, is, is like, I mean, you, you think of like their, their kind of history coming out of the online era and how good that they've been, you know, semifinals at majors, finals over in Rio. Yeah. They have the experience now to understand what kind of a journey you're truly embarking on to get and lift that major trophy, despite the fact they haven't done it quite yet. Oh. Opening kill through the smoke goes to the Deagle of Yabby, but the rest of FaZe streaming in. And I don't know if this is retakeable. The other three players are coming over from the A bomb site. They might give it a little bit of an attempt. There's a decent amount of utility and nades for Heroic to use if they actually want to go for this. They did a fair bit of damage already. Second HE, I don't know if they can find it. If they throw it in the yellow right now, that would be a, a sick position. Maybe there would be someone to set up with. Flashers are going to be going over the wall, and yeah, they want to put the pressure on. They want to try and see if they could do this. It's a good flashbang. There's the H sheet blows off twist to begin with, but Brain coming right back into the round, and that should shut it all the way down. No problems here. Rops with a double. And Rain with a double and phase, they will live through the round, but that got a bit dicey. Yeah, that, that bomb site is so is so nice to hold on to for the T's in the post plant position. You could see even a man disadvantage, even in a four on five, even with the first kill of that retake going to an HE grenade from Heroic and essentially turning it into a three v five, still able to recover. There's still so much work to do for Heroic on that retake, and really nicely held from Phase to get things started two and zero. Oh. Yeah, upgrade into some P250s on the Heroic side. And they're going to be running all of them into the middle. Only one of them making his way past. So trying to sell the idea that it's just sort of a lone player. And then they're going to commit to it. Block on the corner. So no fear of your reign. He's actually just picking them up anyway. It doesn't really matter. The Mac 10 going to get a kill. And that's very smooth. Three kills for reign with the Glock. And could we upgrade into the well, USP if you wanted to. I guess P250 was there as well. But... Yeah. 3 and 0 for phase. I think that he was just setting up for like an information play up middle to get activated when yeah. the push comes in. He didn't even buy a weapon in that round, so plenty of money for Rain moving forward. Brokey's going to invest in the AWP in the first gun round. Kadian's going to have his on the other side. And now we get into the action. Rifle rounds at hand. 3 to nothing start for phase off the pistol round victory. Yeah, we're going to get a crack at it now. Find out the rifles. Let's see what they're about here. Getting started early, it's already been proven today. And we know it in these best of ones, you need to get something on the board a little bit early on. Twist, getting down low outside of the B-bomb site. Shush in the middle. It's a good recovery on that second kill. And Stown going to just be sending a couple of bullets into the middle to pick up the shot on the Rops. 
Brokey and Twist, they should have no business getting back into this round. I think a lot of people are going to be looking towards town to have a wonderful legend stage and set things up. The, the big conversation around Heroic is what a high floor they have in terms of being able to avoid upsets and you know beat all the teams beneath them. But as terms of the top five teams that we have coming into this major, one of the lower ceilings in terms of being able to consistently beat some of those same teams at their tier. It, you're looking at someone like Stown to be able to step it up and have a crazy performance as the star player of Heroic to actually finally fulfill that role and be able to propel them to even bigger heights. Great first gun round from Heroic as FaZe just have to back off and save for the next 45 seconds. Yeah, they can listen to the radio down here. Enjoy a little water wheel that's going on in this spawn. That's about it. Shush not caught off guard at all by that one pop flash and FaZe maybe trying to take advantage during the op shot ring out and seeing if they could slide up and take that control, but I mean, it just gets slut da shut down. Yeah, I mean, your opening play gets destroyed in that fashion so quickly, you don't really have anything to wheel yourself into. No, you don't. Better to save the AWP, no question. Three to one, gonna be the scoreline. I think two phases trying in that round. I mean, Twist was hyper aggressive in this first gun round to take Banana, right? Like he was all the way up, challenging that choke point very, very quickly. Had to run through a Molotov, ate a grenade all the way down to 15 HP. So I think FaZe is trying to like kind of fool that defense a little bit by showing such a fast, aggressive take of Banana that might pull an extra defender away from that mid defense. And obviously that plan uh, just, just didn't pan out, just didn't work. And that's part of the mind games the desk touched upon just before. They threw it over into the game start. Three to one in Heroic, a clean first round. And if you're playing entry on that banana position anyway, you kind of know that that's just a life that you're going to be living sometimes. You will just get grenaded down, or you might run into uh, a bit of a pop flash. There's a lot of ways you could you can end up in a bad position. Kind of part of the role to be, to be there. They're going to send in Brokey with the AWP. Oh, and a boost on over the smoke. Someone is back there, and he could have been dead right away. Yabby just lucky to be alive. They had the right idea. They don't quite get the kill that they were looking for. Stown and Shush holding a crossfire with the A bomb side. They could pretty easily get broken up. And the three man setup at B, which they're going to be able to hold for a while, but eventually they probably have to break up this three man setup and just pull one of them back towards the A bomb side. Maybe not, though. Phase is coming right at him. Brokey, Kerrigan, and Twist, and Rain all at the base of Banana. They want this control. They want to fight for it. What utility gets used? Molotov looks like it's going to come out towards Sandbags. Yabby's behind it. Opening kill goes the way of Twist, and Kerrigan's there for the follow-up. So all of a sudden, not only do they need this third player, they might need a fourth. And Kadian is so blind. Inside of the smoke with an AWP. They're everywhere. He can't really escape, and he's not going to be able to get a no-scope off either. Brokey just catches a shadow. 40 seconds, the bomb drop, a little bit awkward, but they'll take care of Shush anyway, and that should be the end of it. Stown is just miles away. Look at how low Twist, Kerrigan, and Rops are in this round. Don't want to say that it's lucky that they make it out. It was a really good attack to that top banana position. So you love to see that out of phase. But man, that got a bit, uh, a bit dicey at one point. Yeah, opening kill provided by Twist. A good, a good swing from Kerrigan as well in support to find the second kill. And that defense came crumbling down quick. Katie and had no other decisions but to hide in that smoke and just pray. So Stalin's got a long time to keep this gun in his hands. I'm going to park himself into a corner. Yeah, they aren't looking for him already. Carrigan. The HP's too low to actually... Okay, I was going to say, the HP's actually too low to go for it. Yeah. If Carrigan doesn't get that peak, they, they just call a stalemate at the end of the day, but that's a good find right at the end. Wow, this is really, really good. Yeah, the timing on the models of landing, and then you know, you're trying not to play the traditional style and, and, and sort of go through the... Because you just these teams know each other so well that any little detail like that could... At least signal what might be coming. Oh, good aggression. This time, Twist is the one who's beat by Tessis. Pushing down Banana. And Twist occupied to extinguish the Molotov. That's an important opening kill to find when you consider it's pistols on the rest of Heroic. There's two M4s. Three five sevens, And Heroic is running out of nades. And they're taking an additional risk now beyond just the run down Banana. One person holding that. And four at the A bomb site. It's been done many a times. Faze are frozen now, just waiting for potentially something else here. 
going to get any look in the middle right now. They're throwing some deep smokes over towards the library as well, trying to sell the idea that he might sort of yeah, end up at the A-bomb site. We can tell that they're not. And Tessis is down to the field of pressure. He's going to drop a smoke right in front, but surely they're going to be coming through. Why wouldn't they? They don't have any more choices at the moment. That is so much damage. Oh, God, Brokey's practically dead already, and they might just have to cancel this round. Yeah, I think that was really the only plan, was to follow Kerrigan up through the smoke, but the spacing just wasn't there. Kerrigan so much faster. What a perfectly played round. The defensive smoke shuts down this entire hit. Heroic's going to get away with one. A low buy round with three pistols and two M4s and light on nades, and they're going to win it again. Clean. All five players surviving. Double kill from Tess's, and that seals it. You had one smoke at the end of it for, for you know, the last 40, 50 seconds of the round, and it just happens to be put down perfectly. What a masterclass by Tassas as well. He could have he could have chosen to drop that smoke at half wall, right? He spots it initially, cool. and you can choose to do it there. Uh, just falling back and making sure they're truly committing to the B bomb site. There's risk involved in that kind of play, but obviously here he gets the reward. The opening kill pushing down Banana, and then the extended defense for the rest of the round. Beautifully played, and even knowing after Kerrigan, he's got a challenge to make sure the rest of them aren't coming through that smoke. Yeah, which they easily could be. Okay. Four to two, seventh round. Yeah, and winning that round only gets to save one AK, but they, they still, they're making a bit of money behind it, no question. Twist again, trying to see if he can get up close. Actually, Kerrigan leading the charge this time. Twist right behind him. Not finding anyone. Heroic, they saw the challenge. They don't really want to stick around for it, but they are rotating four people. That seems like a massive over-rotation for Heroic. Very curious about this kind of a call. Just making sure they've got Shush, who was pushed up in middle, who had a good, good track of the information at mid. But yeah, a little bit risky. You have to imagine they're setting up for an aggressive play, and here it is, here it comes. Tess is with the support flash. Oh, Brokey rips off Yabby's head. But now they have at least control of top banana. The problem is losing a player. They haven't shifted anyone back, so it's all on Shush. Yeah, by the hay cart. Tess is starting to get there, but even that's probably not going to be enough. It shouldn't be. An isolated two versus four at the A bomb site here. If FaZe can win this round, they're in prime position to do so. Look at that smoke. It's just going to be segmenting off Tessa's. He's actually running straight through it. That is a good call. He's trying to be here to help out Shush. They have a little bit of a crossfire, but it's going to get broken up instantly. Carrigan, that one kill was all they needed. And the rest of them, I don't think they should be going for this one heroic. It's down already, slowly backing on out of there. Great calling out a phase right now. And the kill from Brokey doesn't allow Heroic to shift that third player over on the defense, right? Doesn't allow him to get that extra body. It can only yeah. be the one player in support. Blinded as well, I believe. Yeah, completely blinded. We'll take that all day. Here's the opening from Kerrigan. Shush turning from flashbangs. Couldn't get set and comfortable for the follow-up fight as they enter in. And phase is going to be up to five. Yeah, that's a hugely important shot for Kerrigan. Because there was, you know, a chance for the crossfire to work a little bit better. If it turns into a 2-1-2, two -two, then maybe Stan wants to go for it a little bit more. But yeah, really well read. Kerrigan doing work in terms of figuring out what this defense is like at the moment. And these have been very tactical wins from both teams, like right? Like yes. I mean, even especially like FaZe, when you when you think like their tactics have either worked or they've had to save. You know, the two rounds that heroic wins are just like immediate save calls right out of the gate. These are just one and lost at the moment on the initial setups that both teams are running. Round number eight. SMG MP9 on Yabby. Op still in the hands of Kadian, which hasn't really had to do too much work yet. Now he's going to put himself in position to make a play to get things started for Heroic, but he's held back by Utility. Yeah, different style once again for FaZe. You know, they've, they've shown their hand a couple of times, going for that all-out rush and the aggressive pressure on there. This time, they wait a little bit, and Heroic, they dump a bunch of grenades onto Banana, none of which do anything at all to FaZe. So FaZe are happy, they're just listening in, saying, oh, wow, that's a lot of nades. You can tell on the HUD as well. Not that many left on the heroic side after that. Tess is holding B alone. So similar 4-1 setup that we saw in the one of the previous rounds. And this is where Carrigan can be put into work, right? 
start to clear up parts of the map. You start to get a little bit of information. And the hard part right now for Kerrigan is realizing we don't have any kind of banana controller presence. Like, they, they can have one defender here. This one can be stacked up, which is exactly what's happening. Stown has shifted over to spawn arch. Kadian's got the op angle in towards quad. Yabby in the bomb site. Shush over in pit. So a very strong A defense that FaZe is attacking into. Oh, nice pick off mid air. That is the bomb on the ground as well. So now there aren't that many mind games left. This has been signaled. And Kadian, instead of falling back into it, Kind of a classic move from him. He's just pushing forward instead. Twist gonna get the wide swing against him. We're down to 15 seconds. They should be losing this round. And they definitely will now that Jabby's picked up that double kill with the SMG. 10 seconds on the clock here. Shush, he's gonna be good for the kill. Bomb actually being attempted in the corner, but he came off it. Brokey goes down at the end. Wow, that was a good hold. That MP9 doing so much work. And all based off the fact, uh, you know, oddly enough, no kills come out there. But as we know on Inferno, Banana is so important. And all based off the fact that Heroic is able to stack up four defenders here. Even though Kerrigan remains aggressive and goes down, there's still so many bodies to go against. Nice double kill in the corner of the bomb site. A third round for Heroic as they hang on. It's FaZe who are starting to run out of money without that plant. Two MAC-10s on Twist and Kerrigan. Which is, from a viewership point of view, probably good news. We want a close game. I wish this was a best of three. I think everyone does. But um, we'll take Inferno if we if we can't get anything else. Two MAC-10s. Still some grenades to play around with here. And again, they don't really want to fight for Banana early on. In spite of the fact that they've won it a couple of times, FaZe, they're not really feeling it. You want to throw different looks at them, right? And, and Banana is one of the parts on the map that, the, you know, despite even, even with pace changes of how you can do it, different sets of utility to take it. There's like 20 different ways of taking Banana. This time, a lot of emphasis towards Hulls. Down with a second kill. Reloading. Find safety. Safety enough for Yabby to come in and add one on top. And now it's just Brokey remaining in pit. But he's got a triple kill. And Shush secures the bomb site. It's all on Twist. Wow, that's shocking. They really, th I thought as well, Brokey's surely dead. They just kept throwing bodies at him and he kept taking him down. Twist here. Is it doable? No helmet on Kadian, but it's Shushu's in the corner. He's going to go back, look for it. Let's see if the lack of helmet here is going to be a factor. Walking up close with the AWP. Oh, and there we go. Just popping his head right away. And he does have a chance. He could pick up another weapon, but he's going to stick with the Mac 10. 30 seconds left. Has to go into the pit to pick up the bomb. It's all the way in that back corner. He's trying to figure out where is he? Guessed a couple of angles already. No clue he's in the corner. He's going to go check it and Shush will take him right down. That's some great accuracy on him. What a clock. Wow, if they would have won that round phase, they would have borne themselves a little bit more runway, but they're going to be out of cash. And they're just aggressive. Heroic, and they know the economy of their opponents. And they want to try and see if they could just punish them. Ooh. Dropping out a couple of players, or at least one. Tess is lucky to be alive. Yeah, very lucky to be alive. But I mean, the round's securely in control of Heroic. Low HP on Rops and Brokey as well. So this is just a matter of time. We'll be all tied up at five. Heroic coming right back into this. It'll be third in a row for Heroic. Yeah, it's starting to look more respectable. Tied up game. Shush top fragging on the one side, Brokey on the other side after that last round with 12 kills. So he's hanging himself a decent time at the moment. The economy for Roik is not looking amazing just yet. So in spite of winning, you know, back to back to back rounds here, they're still in a position where they have to be a little bit concerned. Yeah, throw that away. Don't want the MP9 to be upgrading into it. And they're so low on health that it's just a matter of finding a, a way to end it here. Look for some more damage. It's look unlikely. For, look for a mistake. Look yeah. for a peak like this from Kadian. Although it seems like he's grabbing a, a really nice, fortunate timing at distance. Oh, we saw one close up as well. Ready for the follow-up fight. Well done from Kadian. Two kills to end things, and we're all tied up at five. Guns should be coming back for FaZe, though. And as, as we kind of mentioned, or as, you, as we've kind of noticed, FaZe, these 11... Twist leading the way towards Banana. Brokey's going to be there in support. No AWP in his hands, and Twist is going to be committed inside of Banana. Tucked into the bell corner. Brokey in support, and there's that utility damage. Twist taking another nade down to 61 health. Yeah, that last one didn't really do anything to him. Just two points away. 
He's waiting for a mistake, but they're not really going to show themselves just yet. Such a difficult job to try and be the entry on that banana position. And Heroic by extinguishing that Molotov at the half wall are showing that they have presence at top and in, are showing maybe that they want to play in the position of sandbags, they want to play someone aggressive at the corner to be able to double fight that as FaZe take more control. So that might burn a few more pieces of utility off of FaZe. A couple flashbangs to get around the corner, but the defense has shifted into more passive, a boost up towards spawn. And there's the Molotov and the two flashbangs spent to take this control due to the defense that was shown and faked. And that's getting a lot out of it, right? They don't have that many grenades left now, so that's an interesting way to, uh, I to, get, to get the opponent to spend some grenades. I think that's why Kerrigan's going to call everyone to fall back into a B-hit. They don't really have the smokes and the flashbangs to layer to actually make it into the A bomb site. This B-hit is all they have left. And Tessis has another smoke. Well, Kerrigan just actually walked through the smoke in the middle. He just checked out, saw that there's no one at the quad side. One good entry here, and this could be working out. Tess is just crouched in the middle of the lane with the MP9. He's trying to fall back. Yabby on the good double spray, but he cannot escape, and that is worth it for FaZe. The bomb is going to be planted here. And notoriously, a very hard bomb site to retake this one. A lot of teams don't even try. They don't even want to go for it. They don't have the money in the bank either, Heroic, to try to run into this. And unless they get a kill right now, I would say they've already made the call. They're trying to get a little bit closer here. But this is risky. Rops with the good spray. Shush gets one in return, but that doesn't really improve their situation at all. Brokey gonna spot them out. And this is so far ticked already. I'm shocked they're still going for it. Shush, he has a kid on his back, and there's gonna be one good kill. Brokey nearly run down, but he's still alive back here with 12 points to help, and I think time is up. KD, and yeah, he's gonna get close to it, but he can't win the round any longer. The AWP is gone. And Heroic slowly lured into that retake by getting one or two kills here or there. But it was not going to be enough. Back on top is FaZe at 6-5. to five. I'm not against the retake at all, especially considering they had KD and push down middle ready to go on the flank for quite some time. That's a good way to bait out the position, bait out a shot, and almost have it with the dink on the Brokey. But you got to say, a really nice stutter step from Brokey in the kill cam as well to show he was going to go back towards Dark, back towards Emo. KD and completely fooled by that piece of communication. Let's go! as he changes his position right at the end. Yeah, that is really sick, isn't it? He was down at 12 points of health. You're just staying alive at the end. That's everything he needed to do. Kadian's AWP hasn't had too many clean looks. I think he's probably trying to force it at the moment to get involved in this game with the AWP. Peering down over the smoke on top of the half wall, a different look of the B defense. Spots one cross, I believe. Actually, all of Heroic is gone. They've evacuated the B bomb site. This is such a heroic way to play as well. Yeah. Do, doing these kind of gambles. And very often behind them, they will also, what they're doing now, they'll go a bit aggressive. Because you have so many people here, you just, you want to try and force the issue as opposed to waiting around. Smoke up on the one side. And a jump on through, but Shush is quick to shut it down. A good follow-up. Tess is in the middle. He'll find a bomb and he'll find Twist as well. Rops goes down. It's a flawless round for Heroic. Stacking five people in the A-bomb side. Yeah, just showing that presence at Banana, that you're going to defend it again. Extinguishing Molotovs, showing you want to hold it, and then a complete gamble to the other side of the map. Or obviously, as we know in this series, with how many times these teams have faced each other, perhaps not a gamble, perhaps just a read, perhaps a prep, perhaps one of the tricks up Kadian's sleeve that he mentioned in the interview. Yeah. Regardless, it's not even necessarily due to the stack that that wins out. I mean, just aggressive fights. Sure. Shush with the double kill. Tess is peeking behind the mid utility. But in truth, right, if FaZe trade some of those early, you know, kills, yeah, and you they don't keep going, follow up. they're not going to be expecting for like two or three more people to be at the bomb site still. So there probably was a second layer to that defense. All right. Chicken's dead. Chicken is dead. Moment of silence. Well, only pistols for FaZe. They run out of funds first. Not even a P250, just a single flashbang on Brokey. They're going to come through this smoke. Yeah, you might as well give it a crack, you know. See if you can surprise somebody on the other side. Not going to happen. It's down. It's a pretty good spray down. Brokey hunted now. They're feeling it. Kadian, this is where he's done to feel a little bit better about the game. You can kind of tell that he is, uh, like you said earlier, forcing it. I feel like it happens a lot when he's playing, but once he finds the zone that he likes to play in, He's definitely a terrifying opponent. Seven to six. Nobody's really getting away with too much right here. 
but the economy is slowly starting to favor heroic here. I, I mean, you got to say too. I mean, as close as it is, it's due to a really strong start, a six or a five to two run in the early stages of this game, and now it's been a five to one run for for heroic as their defense has clamped down. And in the last six rounds, there's been no bomb plants, right? Yeah. Heroic have just been running it all the way down. Pretty, I mean, a pretty aggressive defense overall at most of these situations. Nice peek down middle from Kadian. Man advantage provided by the op from Heroic. And look at that. That duo is going to go into the hallways. They're ready for it. Got to be careful you don't stack on top of each other because rain can spray you down. That is a bit clumsy. No reason that had to happen. Stal was flashed, but he's still getting the kill. Comes back for more and Rops is there to save his teammate. Twist is on two health and, well, only for a second. Two on two. You go for this, you got money. Yeah, 100%. And the 15th round is coming up next, so there's absolutely no reason to be saving what you got here. How do you make it through the smoke, though? They have a lot of grenades on the heroic side. They can continue to try and throw a couple of them into the bomb site. Tessas and Yabby, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to set up a wall to try and see if they can make their way down. That's a really good smoke to know. Counter nades come out again, and the clock running very low now. Rain just in the graveyard, an excellent one tap onto tap. Yeah, he's just gone and Rain even flashed. He's still able to get the job done. Quad kill on him. And it's hard to score line once again. Seven to seven going into the 15th round. Yeah, that's a really well done job from FaZe. And obviously a bit of a mistake on the five on four. So lined up. You could actually see that building as well. You could see yeah. Kadian trying to get the angle and kept getting stepped in front of. That was just awkward the whole way through. And I think Heroic's going to be frustrated. They let that slip away. Final round of the first half, round 15. All comes down to who's going to take the lead going into halftime. Both teams with full buys. You could just tell that these teams have such a good understanding of each other. I mean, obviously, the scoreline kind of suggests that as well, but nobody's being allowed to get away with very much at the moment. A bit of a more of a standard round here. A little bit of a a early halls aggression, it looks like, from FaZe. Yeah, they want to try to they could go for it. They're jumping on out, but Shush is ready to catch them in the middle. It's down, just locked down. Not even a fight here. And you can understand why FaZe and Kerrigan want to bring that call out, because Heroic's defense at the start of these rounds has been so aggressive on mid. If you can actually yeah. get that standing, if you can get that first kill and wrap around towards that defense, it's such a checkmate play, and obviously this time it's just handled so well. Double kill on Shush, who I feel like every time they've come up mid and he's been in that position has been good for a double kill. Same from Stown as well. So Heroic is going to take an 8-7 lead into the second half. Also because, I mean, the meta is still on Inferno very much is going, you know, three or four people to be early on and then rotating people back in the first 20 seconds. So it even makes sense that you would try and hit that A-bomb site a little bit early just in case you could find that little bit of a weakness. Rops walking into the middle and Kadian will drop him eight to seven, like you said, at the end of the half. Second up. To be the third fraggers for their respective teams, but this is as close as you'd like and neither one giving up any kind of an inch. And that first half, marked by runs and heroic, just clamped down towards the end of the day. They're gonna be on the offense now. A chance to show their quality. Slow paced pistol. Kerrigan, Brokey, and Rops on the A defense. And this will, it appears, be a Hall's pop. Yeah. With what? Stown throwing the library smoke to where Kerrigan is holding? I'm assuming he's going to eventually fall back and do that. Or the hate card smoke to actually get them activated. Oh, yeah, that could be it too. Three players going in Hall's. Shush is going to come out boiler and come up lane a little bit late, but it's all on these duelies in the hands of Brokey. Oh, there we go. Just to get them out middle a little bit. Shush clearing the path. Molotov is going to go down towards the pit. You have to assume they have to get past Brokey and the duelies. And he's holding them back only for a second. Kadian steps up for the swing and will take down Brokey. Rops in the pit and he's worried running out of bullets as well. 45 seconds here and eventually he'll go down. Good grenade though. Kadian <laughs> just continuing to slaughter them at the A-bomb site. Twist and Rain trying to get back into this one. Bomb 
Finally going to get attempted here, but Kadian, how much more does he have left in him? Another Goosh comes out, but Rain will finally put an end to him, and now it's on Jabby. They're low on health. He's going to pick up one of them, and a lot of trouble here for Twist. He has to get a clean headshot on Jabby. No time to delay on this one, and he can't get the job done. Heroic to win the second half pistol. Holy hell, the trades from Kadian that whole round through are so impressive. Even getting a Goosh on Twist at the end of the day to set up the 1v2 from Yabby. An easy 1v2 with his opponents just one bullet away. Hiroki only getting a 1 here a good slide in from Kadian but man this defense just could never truly hold on all thanks to Kadian pushing through good finds and it's nine to seven I really thought that Groki's uh dualies were gonna be able to shut the whole round down it looked like it wow nice shot Ooh, that's spicy yeah good swing from Yabby more than happy to take a shot from the scout to get that headshot underway he's brought down to 30 health we only have a lot of Mac 10s to play around with. Going to swap the AK over to someone with a little bit more health. Yeah, and I think if you're heroic at this point, you find yourself with four and banana, you find yourself with a five on four. I, I think this might just be a pull a trigger on an execute, a full kind of set piece. Twist does have utility, and they walk right into it. TK doesn't matter whatsoever. But do they want to continue forward? They don't know if there's going to be a stack, so it might be a little bit of a risk. And with the time on the clock, they're going to pump the brakes. Yeah, this is where the mind games really start to come in, right? You don't know if that forward position is a way to actually sell a full-on stack. That can definitely be done. You don't always have to hide the stack. Sometimes you can you can sort of mask it by having that little bit of something showing. You get that early kill and you think, okay, that's it. We've we've secured the bomb site. Twist on the inside. Deagle. Fire is absolutely everywhere. He has no idea where to stand. Oh, but he still gets the kill on Stalin. Hold the phone. Rops at the corner. If he wins this fight, he's got no idea. Oh, that is kind of heartbreaking. Yabby should be able to win this fight, no problem. I don't know. Rops has been... Oh, there it is. The turn. That's a huge win. And this is the final play from Heroic. They have to attack into this. Rops turns from a flashbang. Kerrigan with the Deagle. Bails him out. It's Shush. Left alone. 1v2. What a shot from Kerrigan. That came clean out of nowhere. Shush has got a little bit of health here. Going to try and back on out. Twist in the middle, but Shush has got into this position. It's a very powerful position to be in against these last two players. And Shush can actually work his way towards Boiler if he wants to get real crazy. He's going to hold his nerve, though, sticking at the end of Hall. He's going to wait for this to come in, and now FaZe is going to have to start making noise. They're running out of time. Yeah, he knows. They don't have a kit. They don't have a smoke or anything, so they're going to have to come and find him out. They're going to find out the hard way. Shush with a good double spray down. Triple overall in the round. And Heroic, they are lucky to make it out of this round. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot from Kerrigan. I thought that might have saved the day for Rops. Trying to hold on to that A-bomb site all on his own. But Shush again delivering. This time in a clutch as well. This shot right here, Kerrigan, that almost took the pressure away. Shush was hard-pressed to win that. But Twist and Kerrigan, no idea where he disappeared to. Three-round lead from Heroic, and FaZe is going to buy right back up into it. They want to keep oh. the pressure on. That's kind of risky, though, isn't it? Very risky. They're actually up against a better buy than last time. There's a lot of Mac 10s in play this time. The AKs are here. And this is delaying a lot of times before they can get a solid buy. This is actually a really, really sketchy decision. Yeah, you know, you know there's going to be a second player there. That's a well-known boost by now. Doesn't mean you can't get a kill. It's cool to try it. Still kind of new. But, um... They were going to be ready. Kadian able to take the first kill. But you're right. This 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 allows heroic. This gives them like an extra kind of easier round, right? Like that. There's not going to be a full buy. There's not going to be the op. There's not going to be M4s with full utility. This this makes this opening side of the T side to establish your money and establish the momentum. Very nice for the heroic attack. And it's interesting. I mean, that was a close round, but. Almost selling out their own CT side a little bit here is what it feels like for FaZe. I mean, it's easy to criticize the call from the outside. On the sure. inside, though, having to make that decision. That's a bold one, and you got to admire it, especially at the Major. Now, FaZe does have the right read. All four remaining defenders are at this bomb site. Here's the hit. Yeah, you're right. They're stacked up. This could actually work out. Tessus, though, just cracking it open. A good couple of kills. And even at the stack, it's not going to make any difference at all. Heroic up to 11, and FaZe... Yeah, 
they might just, I mean, if they have a timeout now, it might be good to use it. And I mean, look, the, the if statements aren't always fair to put in these situations, but I would have loved to have seen that defense with M4s in their hands instead of FAMAS. I think they would have sure. gotten a couple kills on that initial contact. A couple of those sprays might have connected. That initial B fight might have gone a little bit differently. And unfortunately not able to uh, to make it work with the weaker weapons. So now FaZe is going to have to sit back. It's a small investment. Deagles, SMG. But man, it, it's gonna heroic's gonna be potentially at 12 before FaZe get into the full buys. Yeah, an interesting and tough position to be in right now. There's always a chance for a Deagle. You never want to count out the Deagles, do you? Have a couple of players here that definitely can can swing them around. Never want to count out FaZe either. Yeah, true. But so far, no one stepped up to try and challenge Heroic. They're roaming around the middle of the map. Kerrigan is at least taking a look into that top mid position. That was not exactly graceful from, from Jabby, making the jump down. And they're going to be rotating back. I don't know how they know, but they have a good read. Yeah, again, a good, a good feeling. Just not the stopping power that you'd like. Twist is here with dualies. Rain is here with low HP and a deagle. Kerrigan's arriving with a deagle. They're going to double nade rain. Oh no, they're actually throwing it the other way. That's interesting. They could have done it for the coffins. Won't make a difference. They're going to get Kerrigan anyway. But yeah, trying to use all the utility here, which is super smart for Heroic. Instead of fighting it straight up and making it a fair fight, why not just use as much as you possibly can? The dualies shut down. And drops real far away from the action. So it'll be 12 to 7 here. Rops has light armor as well, so he's going to want to save that into the next round. And he should be just fine in doing it. There's no motivation for Rogue to hunt, knowing it was just pistols really on the board. Bomb has been planted. Five round lead from Heroic. That early gamble. That early gamble of the phase economy to keep the pressure up has gone the other direction. And now they're in a the little bit of a hole. Yeah, you wonder if that's also there when, I guess on the other hand, if you win it, it's not just that you win another round and you get back into a bit early. You probably also fire up the team quite a bit, right? You, f you get everyone to feel real alive. And Brokey and Rops and Rain have all been playing very well at the moment. So you probably just think, all right, we just need one or two of these players in, the, in that round to, to come alive and it's going to be fine. Bomb will explode and Rops not really feeling it. Yeah, Rob's just hoping to keep him boxed in close to that bomb explosion to take some weapons away and just have a few players die at the end of the day. No chance for him to recover that AK-47. But FaZe better get started right here, right now. Time out. They haven't had any real issues. Yeah, that's a... Uh, when you put it like that, it's become a pretty one-sided game here at the end of it for Heroic. Three-man stack at the top of Banana. As FaZe are looking to try and defend that in case Heroic would try something really fast. But it's just Stown who's kind of throwing some nades up there to hold them back. Rops in the pit and Kerrigan over at the arch. So that A defense is paper thin at the moment. Yeah, and they're going to rotate back behind it. Ooh, that's a bit risky though. Falling back while reloading. And he gets caught by Cadian. That yeah. couldn't have worked out any better. Yeah, that's a really unique timing that I don't think Rain was obviously not ready for. And that's that's step one done for Heroic in this round. What a great T side being called at the moment. Back to A we go. You mentioned it was paper thin. It hasn't gotten any stronger. Kerrigan on wrap gonna come through the smoke, caught by Stown. And what's up, Rops? What you got, baby? It's nothing. Tessis takes him as well. And Heroic easily finds their way to 13. Yeah, instant shutdown. The timing there at Top Banana definitely... That, to, probably to understand that timing properly, you'd have to go back and watch these two teams play Inferno like 10 other times just to get the context for why that works out. Ch Chad and I had this conversation with, with Zeus uh, yesterday in our, in our podcast talking about the, how exciting that banana fight is with all the different variety of utility yeah. and all the ways you can just change things, leave a piece out, add a piece here, go without a piece here. I, and I mean, the, the defenders and the attackers have to be so intimately knowledgeable of what each and every piece of utility yeah. means. And I think just, just messing with the sequence of utility that you normally see kind of throws timings off. We saw FaZe do it once or twice in, twice in the first half as well. Yeah. Now we have Rain caught off guard by it, and that is a great hunt from Heroic to take the remaining weapons away. This is ruthless. 
it also makes understanding some of what's happening a little bit tricky, right? Because you, you, it has to be contextualized through matches that we're not even watching right now. <laughs> so um, potentially quite uh, hard to figure out exactly what's going on. But, you know, nonetheless, a six-round gap here and Heroic coming out on top at the moment. But, yeah, the, I think the, the sort of historical implication of some of those battles, I think, is also what makes the game so interesting, though. Putting some pressure on here. Only casualty so far is the chicken that ran into the line of fire. And again, that same lean towards the B-bomb side early on. It's going to get exploited again. Coming through the smoke, or just as it fades, utility being spent. Shush was a little bit ahead of the action. Still just Rops and Kerrigan. Range has cleared out top banana, so all five or all three B defenders are going to start shifting over. Rain actually sticks around. Twist and Brokey are here, but you better hope and pray these deagles hit some shots. And with those smokes being deployed, I don't think they're going to get the chance. Oh, but Robs starts out. Gets the one kill. He had the AK picked up, but Tessis just doesn't care at oh all. Oh my god. He's just going to open up the bomb site, whether they were ready or not. And Kadian holding the back line here. Yeah, they can come with the smoke, but it's not really going to make a difference here. They've, oh, they're already dug in Heroic. They're so deep on this defense now that the bomb is planted. I don't think there's anything left to really be accomplished. So, 14 rounds on the side of Heroic. Tess is making quick work of that A defense. Yeah, those are some filthy little shots. Predicting Rops was going to have the angle. And I mean, you know, Rops, Rops has to take that fight. That's the only chance of holding onto that bomb site is him recovering that AK-47 and having more of an impact. So he really had no other option but just to sit in that crack and hold the angle and see if he can get one more. But Tess is just so on point. Heroic, so on point. 14 to 7. First half was close, but this has turned into a beatdown. Yeah, it really has. They've completely blanked them in the second half. The defense for FaZe never really got up and running at all. They don't have the money to keep up the buys. They can buy into this round, but that's only the round loss bonus that's really helping her out of the moment. Heroic look unstoppable. Twenty second round. Let's see how this plays out again. That same three two lean. Not that I'm criticizing it or anything. It's it's pretty standard stuff. But you saw heroic some of the risks they took, right? Pushing almost four or five people at the B bomb side, then switching it back to A, and just like you're trying to roll the dice a little bit harder. And at least one of those times they were right about it, and it kind of worked out for them. Faze now back to a more traditional setup. Carrigan holding over at the arch position. And Robson broke. He could start a fall a little bit back. Didn't really want to play that forward in the middle. Is this enough to make Heroic just go for the B bomb side? They put a little bit of pressure on middle. I mean, Tiny bit. they've been able to really hit the nice timing and the nice defense. Like, the, they've been really able to find a good gap in the rotation to exploit this A-bomb set a number of times with just two defenders. So that's the question. Will that continue? Previously, it was taking banana control, getting all the way up towards top banana, and then falling back into a quick A hit off of one kill. Now they're attacking into this B defense, and if this is a clean entry provided, Reigns here holds the line for one good flick from Brokey. Picks down out of the sky, and that'll force Heroic back to A, but there's three defenders here this time. Yeah, they're so set up for it. Should be no way through. I say that, but Tessis, he's already cracked over Kadian or Kerrigan. Drops and Twister on the other side. This flashbang is good. It will slow them down a little bit. Tessis and Kadian continue. They have such excellent communication. They just spotted them in the graveyard and they're ready to follow it up now. Two versus two with the bomb planted. Brokey worried about this one. He has to wait for Rain, who's only now just showing up. There's no kit. They have a smoke and a flashbang, but I, I mean, oh, I, with no. this kind of a scoreline, I feel like you have to go for it, but this is desperate. Yeah, you're right. You probably have to go for it right now. Otherwise, you're going to run out of rounds anyway. Tessis counting the second in his head. He peeks right into it. And Brokey patiently waiting. They need to be really fast with this one. And Katie, and he's hiding in the corner. He's got all day to do this. They have no idea. He's walked up behind them. The spray is not perfect, but it will not make a difference in the end. Rain going to get the kill, but it won't make a difference. They can't. Oh, he actually picked up a kit.
No, it doesn't matter. There was one on the ground somewhere. They're still going to lose the round, Jason, and it will be another one for Heroic. Yeah, Heroic is working them across the map at this point. This is this is wonderful. This is a three-on-five conversion falling back into a full A defense. But, I mean, I think this might speak to some of the issues that FaZe have talked about having communication not as clean, things not clicking nearly as well as it could have. That defense could have been way stronger with that graveyard position. Kerrigan picked off isolated and alone in middle in the cubby position. This, just not able to hold back Heroic in any sense in this second half. Oh, man. Painful way to lose a round. Retake was looking good when they took down Tessis, and now they're going to be crisping rain at the top of Banana. Blown up between Stown and Shush, and flashed as well. Just couldn't see anything. Three for Mars and one M4 left here. Phase. No answers in the second half. They have won zero rounds on the CT side. They didn't really have any answers in the first half, let's be honest. They got out to a good start. But when Heroic showed up and clamped down that defense, FaZe could not find a consistent solution. This is going to end on a 14-2 run if Heroic win this round. Yeah, it's looking good right now. Rops is alone, and Jappy's going to be able to jump out on the other side. Kerrigan is running to try and help out his teammate, but it will just be too late. And now that he's running in there, lucky to still be alive. If there was a rifle out there in the hallway, he would have been dead. Three versus two. Twist and broke you. Actually, good shot. Jammy's going to be going down. But Stown taking up a very powerful... This graveyard position is just always so good. And this has been an easy formula for Heroic. Take banana control, put some presence there, back to the A bomb site. It's worked this entire half. Rinse and repeat over and over again. Oh, they've got to be real careful. Smoke's fading. And Stown's able to see it. Twist is on his own. And it's going to be the end of the line. Heroic. They look very strong at the moment. Kadium will take him down. And it's